1975, the first episode of Starsky and Hutch premiered on ABC, and audiences were hooked. The show followed the adventures of two California detectives, Starsky, played by Paul Michael Glazer, and Hutchinson, played by David Soule. However, the real star of the series was the red and white Ford Torino, which is coincidentally also the first thing the audiences would see in the opening credits of the show. For four years, Starsky and Hutch entertained the network's loyal audience with car chases and gravity-defying traffic maneuvers. While some of these sequences may seem unbelievable and even ridiculous to the present-day audience, viewers will benefit from knowing that the show provided ample inspiration for future smash hits, including Lethal Weapon (1987). Pulp Fiction, 1994, and Shanghai Noon, 2000. The popularity of the show is partly because it was eventually made into a hit film as well as a successful game show. In this video, we'll tell you some interesting facts about Starsky and Hutch. Facts First presents Why Paul Michael Glazer Tried to Quit Starsky and Hutch. Before you dive into this list with us, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest videos. Starsky and Hutch is synonymous with the iconic red Ford Torino that also featured in the opening credits. However, the producers of the show didn't want the red Torino. Instead, they had their eyes on a green and white Chevy Camaro. They reached out to the Chevrolet team, but when they didn't hear anything back, they decided to go with the Ford Torino. Surprisingly, most of the cast members of the show, including Paul Michael Glazer, thought the car was quite ugly. In fact, Glazer even went as far to say he hated the car. Funny how things change quickly, right? Chevrolet's loss was Ford's gain. After Ford Torino appeared on Starsky and Hutch, its popularity skyrocketed. Nobody knows how many Ford Torinos were used for filming purposes while Starsky and Hutch was on the air. However, Ford once disclosed it had, at one point during the filming of the show, produced 1,300 different special edition Starsky and Hutch Torinos. Ford Torino also made an appearance on the Dukes of Hazard, and one of the cars used by Starsky and Hutch sold for $40,000 in 2014. Amazing, isn't it? Before we tell you about other famous things on the set of Starsky and Hutch, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about all our latest videos. Well, Ford Torino wasn't the only thing famous on the sets of Starsky and Hutch. One of the guns that Hutch used during the show was as popular as the car itself and maybe even more. This was the same handgun that Clint Eastwood had used in the 1973 film Magnum Force. When the show was adapted into a film in 2004, a similar gun was used. Did you know that the creator Creators of the show drew inspiration from David Greenberg and Robert Hance, two real-life New York City police officers who eventually came to be known as Batman and Robin. The two solved many crimes in Brooklyn. In 1974, a film based on their lives called The Super Cops appeared in cinemas and was a hit. The next year saw Starsky and Hutch premiere on ABC. Starsky and Hutch's main informant was a street-smart man named Huggy Bear who ran a bar called Huggy Bears. After Starsky and Hutch aired in France, it instantly became popular. However, in France, Huggy Bear was called Huggy Le Bon Ton Tuyo, which translates to Huggy Good Tips, as the French wanted Huggy's name to reflect his personality. We see no harm in that, right? The French version of the show was dubbed in such a way that the series developed a comedic tone. Colloquialisms and ad lib lines flowed freely making the show quite different from the original version. The good part is this dubbing worked in favor of the show. Many believe that the comedic tone and the ad-libbed lines were actually the real reason the show became so popular in France. Starsky and Hutch's boss was a serious and gruff man named Captain Harold C. Doby. When the pilot was shot, actor Richard Ward played the role of Doby. However, after the show got picked up by the network, the producers decided to replace Ward with Bernie Hamilton, who excelled at playing such roles. The camaraderie between Starsky and Hutch was palpable from the beginning. However, their chemistry wasn't the main focus of the show until 1977, when protests erupted against excessive violence on television, and the focus of the show, therefore, had to be shifted from violent crime scenes to the bromance between the two actors. With action becoming scarce, there was a lot of banter between the two characters, which the audience quite enjoyed. And that, of course, led to rumors. Many gay fans of the show like to believe that Starsky and Hutch were actually the first working gay couple of the television world. Either way, we can certainly say we thoroughly enjoyed the bromance between the two. During the third season, Hutch grew a mustache that audiences did not like. Most viewers thought the actor looked rather stupid with extra facial hair, and thankfully, David Soule decided to get rid of it in the fourth season. On the show, Starsky and Hutch worked for the Bay City Police Department in California, which obviously was not a real place. Though there are a few Bay City locations around the U.S., the one in the series was fake. 
In fact, most of the show was shot in Los Angeles. Paul Michael Glazer owes a lot to Starsky and Hutch. However, Glazer became tired of all the fame and popularity the show brought him. He became uncomfortable with women chasing him and banging on his door. Therefore, by the end of the second season, Glazer was unhappy with the show and wanted to quit. But since the show was quite popular, the producers fought with Glazer and kept him bound to the show, citing his contract. However, they introduced Starsky's younger brother in the fourth season as a backup option. Since Glazer was so unhappy with the show, the producers decided to kill off Starsky in the last episode of season four. They even filmed this episode. However, at the last moment, they decided to go with another episode where Starsky lives. Paul Michael Glazer wasn't easy to work with. One of the reasons behind his terrible onset attitude was his insecurity about his looks. In the show, he wanted to be the hot cop. He therefore insisted the writers highlight his handsomeness in every episode and create plots that would allow him to be shown flirting with different women. More importantly, he would also change his lines because he thought what he wrote was better than the copy created by the writers. No wonder the writers were so keen on killing him off during the season. David Soule was born in Chicago, Illinois, and had become quite popular in America in the 70s. However, in 2004, he became a British citizen. Soule decided to switch full-time to the theater, which he had always enjoyed. He now lives in London with his wife, Helen Snow. Paul Michael Glazer's personal life was full of hardships. Glazer became an advocate for HIV and AIDS research after losing both his wife and daughter to the disease. Glazer married Elizabeth Meyer in 1980, and in 1981, she contracted HIV during childbirth. Elizabeth didn't know she had contracted it until 1984, when she, along with both her children, daughter Ariel and son Jake, tested positive. Their daughter Ariel died in 1988, and Elizabeth passed away in 1994, after founding the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. After his wife's death, Paul Michael Glazer became an advocate for HIV and AIDS research and served as the chairman of the foundation established by his late wife until 2002. In 1996, Glazer married Tracy Barone, but the couple separated in 2007 after 10 years of marriage. In 2004, the show was made into a film with Ben Stiller playing David Starsky and Owen Wilson Wilson playing Ken Hutchinson. Snoop Dogg was chosen to play Huggy Bear. Both David Soule and Paul Michael Glazer made a guest appearance in the film. At the end of the movie, the original Starsky and Hutch appear as car salesmen and sell a new car to the detective duo. The film was quite a hit and grossed close to $170 million in box office sales. Much like other 70s TV shows, Starsky and Hutch was often quite backward in its attitudes towards women. The detective duo would often make offensive comments on women police officers and were actually even shown pinching their behinds on several occasions. Well, this was the 70s. Had the show aired today, it would have become mired in controversy due to the poor depiction of women. For many of us, Starsky and Hutch is part of our childhood, and thus the show will always evoke feelings of nostalgia. Do you remember watching Starsky and Hutch as a child? Of the two detectives, who was your favorite? And did you enjoy these interesting facts about the show? Please let us know your opinion in the comments section. We love hearing from you guys. Before you sign out, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, press the bell icon if you want us to entertain you every day.